puberty blockers. We've been told for years that these are safe for children. What do they always say? They always say safe and reversible. And now, what a surprise, Adam. Maybe that's not the case. You know, I kind of guessed this like, <laughs> some time ago, so I don't want to spoil it for you, but this is not news to me. Mm -hmm. So we have here uh, Professor Ashley Gross, uh, Grossman, an endocrinologist at Oxford University, Okay, right. is uh, highlighting a new study that just came out, a new study that shows. Now, if this study turns out to be true, because an important thing to talk about that I've some people haven't talked about this when they when they refer to the study. This is a preprint of a study. The study has not been peer Ooh, reviewed okay. yet. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But what this study shows, this preprint of the study shows, is that taking puberty blockers and then getting off of them actually damages a young boy's testes and sperm count. Who would have guessed it? <laughs> Look, I mean, this guy, this guy just looks like a dodgy old transphobe here. How can we trust this guy, Sitch? I mean, would you have ever thought that taking a chemical that literally prevents your body from going through the natural puberty would possibly maybe have some kind of detrimental side effects? You know, that such outside the, the thinking of uh, possibilities. I would have thought that, but you know, there is this social thing where people will call me a transphobe if I think that. So <laughs> I, I've decided not to think that. I've completely turned my brain off and I'm just going with what people tell me now. Mm -hmm. So no, this is very important. Course. And we've talked about this in the past. So the UK, you know, they had that big scandal, which uh, you read about actually in the yes. book, um, the Travis Stock book. And yes. they're having a big review now, a complete review uh, for the country to make determinations about what will be their government's recommendations and laws regarding how to deal with uh, kids that have gender dysphoria and, and the whole transgender issue. And this came out right before it. So this is probably going to probably have an impact on it. And it's showing, or at least what this person is saying, is that this is yet another study that shows that there's not solid evidence that there's any reason really to put a child on puberty blockers without a really definitive diagnosis of gender dysphoria without because right now the attitude is sort of put them on puberty blockers and then we'll wait and see what happens yeah this was the book is actually called a time time to think and they in, in the book the critique is really you know, nobody's really doing any thinking. Like the the pitch is we put them on the puberty blockers and this just gives us time to kind of figure out what's going on, which direction they want to go. But as soon as they go on the puberty blockers, it's like, okay, well, they've decided which direction they're going and nobody really thinks about anything. It's just puberty blockers to cross-sex hormones to transition. So, Yeah. No thinking. Yeah, and that's the big problem. I mean, this was even in this was so wild to me. This is even in the um, you know, the original uh oh my god, I'm totally mind foggy. <laughs> that's okay, Sitch. <laughs> it, you know, if you're on puberty blockers now, blank. I'm on puberty blockers <laughs> right now, it's affecting my thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh the in the original DSM five. Right. Okay. okay. Even in the original DSM five. They were talking about how that they had these studies that showed that the overwhelming majority of kids, up right. to 80 to 90 percent of kids who had early signs of gender dysphoria would desist once they went through puberty. And right. this is before they gave any of these kids puberty blockers. And then lo and, and this you can look this up. This is in the DSM-5. It says it there very clearly. And then all of a sudden they start giving kids puberty blockers and that number drops down to like 20, 40 percent of people desisting. And right. no one is like, hmm, is it possible that the puberty blockers are interfering with natural desistance here? Maybe this is something we should investigate. Because I think that's going to be the next the next step. Because so this preprint, essentially what they did was they had uh, you know, young boys who were given puberty blockers. And actually, this is kind of uh, <laughs> interesting. I was reading this study. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. And you actually, you read the study that this article is referencing. I read the study that this Look article is referencing, and I was worried because it's an it's it's an article about the testicle size of underage boys. 
Okay. Well, obviously I, you're going to be on a list now. Yes. So I, <laughs> so I, I open the study as I open it. I'm like scrolling through. I'm like, oh my God, I hope there's no, <laughs> there's no pictures in here. Please Dear. God, there's no pictures. Ouch. I don't want to be on a list. There's no pictures. Okay. Okay. Thank God. No, no pictures like, you know, like that. But, um, no, but so, it, you know, and it talks about how the majority of the people that they, they tested, uh, they were on the puberty blockers, had um, some level, some slight, some moderate, some severe level of test of uh, testicle shrinkage Ooh. when they, once they get off the puberty blocker. Wow. And it's not clear that it's going to, you know, go to whatever it would normally be, essentially. This, this is like, this is so devastating. Yes, it's horrible. You go on to this stuff and you change your mind, but you end up like cutting your, your penis size in half. Oh my God. Yes. Well, this was measuring their, I don't, they weren't measuring their, their dicks. Okay. But I think it's only because they don't know. Cause that's the, the thing that was funny when I was reading the study that they're like, we have the largest selection of, of like, you know, testicle size information. <laughs> it was like, like why do they even... <laughs> doing this study? I was like, why did anyone have this information in the first? I mean, I guess I'm glad if it turns out it's helpful to science, but like, who's taking this information in the first place? I mean, is this a metric for health? I'm I'm not sure. You laughed at him when me and Short Fat Talk were talking oh, about penis inspection day. Okay. And now we see how important it is for schools to have penis inspection day. That's the only way to be able to measure this stuff. Okay. I want to I want to talk about the desistance thing for a second. Because the idea that you know, when kids go through puberty, I, I don't know about you, but when I went through puberty, I went a little girl crazy. So mm -hmm. it, I can imagine that. happening. <laughs> no one who follows us knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that happening with girls too. Like girls go a little boy crazy, right? Right. Like, don't you think that helps in eliminating any kind of gender confusion? Or... It definitely can. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, exactly. Sure. But like before puberty, you're kind of, you know, Boys and girls are like the enemy, right? The, the boys group together and the girls right. are the enemies. Yes. Yes. That's but puberty true. changes all that. So mm -hmm. giving someone puberty blockers, not not bringing on that clear understanding of of biological sex and 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 gender, it seems obvious that a lot of these cases of gender confusion would be cleared up by puberty. So. That just seems patently obvious. Which is what the the, the data has shows. shown. Yeah, exactly. Right before ninety they're the percent. Blockers. Yeah, ninety yeah. percent of it is cleared up. And I could right. see maybe the the ten percent that isn't is you know transgender and maybe gay people as well because you know that they're you know if you're a guy and all of your friends are going girl crazy and you're, you have same sex attraction like you're you're I mean you're a little alone in that right mm -hmm. yeah so. I could see there's still remaining some kind of gender confusion there. But that, even in the Tavistock book, the, the Time to Think book, they talked openly about how they were transing the gay away, which is horrible. Like intentionally or accidentally? Accidentally, yeah. Well, they did mm -hmm. mention that there were actual parents that felt more comfortable having trans kids than gay kids. Seems so strange to me, but I know we've talked about this before. Yes, yes. Yeah. But most people it doesn't seem strange to. So so That's what fair. so what is so, uh what yeah, what's going on with this article? So what's okay, so basically, yeah, so they found that you know, like the boys being on these puberty blockers, you when they get off them, there'd be some level of of testicular atrophy and some level of like a very low or even stunted amount of sperm count. And one of you know, some of the cases they highlight was there's a 12 year old boy who they had given puberty blockers for 14 months. And mm -hmm. it reported, according to the study, that nearly 60% of his testicles had atrophied. Well, that's awful, right? After being on the puberty blockers for 14 months. Okay. Right. Can you even reproduce with 40%? effective effectiveness no i don't know it's definitely gonna be more difficult yeah. and also even worse they showed no this doesn't show up in everyone it showed up in, in a select few but it showed the appearance of of these small clusters of calcium that can often be linked to testicular cancer as well in yeah, some I of saw these people that too. 
Yeah. So not only are you sterilizing them, you're increasing their chances of getting testicular cancer. Possibly. Right. Great Possibly. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Looks safe and reversible, safe right? And reversible. That's what you were saying. Which, by the way, these puberty blockers were never ever tested on. This is what this is what's crazy to me. Do you think they tell parents, okay, we're going to give your kid puberty blockers? By the way, these were used basically entirely for precocious puberty, which is when a child goes through puberty too early at a very young age, which can cause some health problems. And so they basically stop it until it's like the proper age that your body can handle it. And it's, that's what it was like used for and tested for. And, you know, that was it. It's never been used or tested in any sort of uh, controlled way on gender dysphoria and using it for this purpose of stunting kids puberty to then give them cross-sex hormones. And I don't, I mean, do you think they tell the parents, oh, by the way, this is like a pretty experimental thing. <laughs> like, of course not. Of course No, they not. say it's safe yeah. and reversible. Which what is, parent? They don't know. Well, yeah, what parent would accept this kind of treatment if they came out and said, oh yeah, by the way, this is a totally experimental treatment. Right. They'd tell them no way. They'd say, get out of here. Don't experiment on my kid, right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. And there's another uh, kid in the study. There's a 14-year-old page, uh, patient who had been on it for four years, and they found that his sperm cells like stopped. He stopped producing sperm cells. How are you? You're putting off puberty for four years? Yes. Four years? Well, and actually, it's even crazy. That's insane. No, but it's even crazy because he was 14. So that means they started they started on him on them when he was 10. Okay. So at 10, they gave him puberty blockers. He'd been on it for 14 years. He's 14, and now he's not producing sperm. Eminently predictable. <laughs> like, I don't see... I just don't see how they can't imagine that there is going to be problems for this. This is hubris off the charts. Also, how is that not going to, like... Yeah, you're completely correct, but how is that not going to totally screw the kid's mind? Like, if you're 14, so you're you're in first year of high school, even before that, you're in middle school, and you're like the only person not going through puberty. Like, that's going to totally mess up any psychological problems that you have already, right? You know, forget gender dysphoria. It's gonna it's gonna make you be a complete wreck at school, and you're like, yeah. oh, I guess I feel even worse at school. I must have gender dysphoria, right? Yeah, this is sick. Hopefully it comes to an end. And this comes right on the heels of uh, not long ago, there was the WPATH leak files, which was a showed a bunch of internal communications between people at WPATH, which is like the largest organization that's kind of advocating for transgender medicine that people point to to basically say, look, see, it's safe. You know, this is a trustworthy organization. And a bunch of communications were leaked that showed that a lot of people in the organization themselves are either a highly, highly ideologically biased and, and motivated for ideological reasons, or b just kind of winging it. <laughs> yeah, just kind of winging it. It's so terrifying. These parents they go into these institutions and they think that they have the 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 backing of science. They think mm -hmm. everything has been done by some double blind study and all of this stuff is safe and effective. Little do they know they're being completely experimented on by ideologues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now what's going on in the UK, I think is super important because they're doing this full review on whether kids should be engaged in any sort of uh, transitioning kind of uh, puberty blockers or surgeries. And the way you get things moving, the way you get the like the mainstream to care is that you need to have studies. You need to have some organization that they can't ignore for political reasons. Right, and so, that's a good idea. Yeah, and so like if the country, you know, of United Kingdom comes out and says like, you know, we have a bunch of evidence that shows this is unsafe, it's going to cause a response in America. The Amer these American organizations that are ideologically motivated, that have their heads in the sand, they can't ignore it anymore. Like, and it's very interesting, funny because the Daily Mail article points out that while England is going through this whole thing, you have the American Academy of Pediatrics, which is another one of these organizations that people point to to say, see, it's safe and effective. They actually came out uh, not that long ago and they were suggesting that if you, as a doctor or as a family member, withhold 
gender affirming care to child to children it amounts to uh, emotional abuse yeah child abuse yeah and this was and they put this out in response to some of these red states which are now passing laws that are basically preventing kids from transitioning when they're young right so i'm very very happy that england's doing this um i think that whatever they produce is going to be wildly beneficial to the world, especially the English speaking world. You know, in America, we can kind of ignore what like the non English speaking countries do. We're like, oh, who cares what the Danes are doing or, you know, who cares what any of those people are doing, right? But if the Brits come out and they're like, no, this is all BS, this doesn't work, there's no evidence for it, I think you will start to see a, you know, that combined with the WPATH leaks, that combined with this new study, if this new study is peer reviewed and found to be, you know, upheld. And you are starting to see some lawsuits. You know, starting to, to come out in the in America, and I think the tides will shift on this issue. Yeah, let's hope some some institution does gain some power in this. I think the just getting the message out there and the parents, you know, waking up and showing some resistance as well, would be super helpful. So yes. I think that is happening. I think parents are starting to question this stuff. Definitely. All right. We'll leave it there. Hi, you just listened to a Sitch and Adam recorded video. That's right, we're still doing recorded videos. And we're even doing shorter daily live streams now beginning at 2 p.m. Eastern where we cover the top news stories of the day. Check it out. And you can super chat us or you can join the channel. Subscribe to this channel right here to watch the live show or watch more of our awesome deep dive videos.